and welcome to the March or Die show. Glad to have you with me today and uh, appreciate you listening and or watching wherever it is you are consuming this content from. If you are listening over at Mojo 50, thank you for doing that. Glad to have you with me. Perhaps you are listening to the podcast version. Thank you for being there as well. Make sure that you subscribe to this show on the platform you're listening from. And I hope that all of you will eventually make your way over to YouTube. You can find my channel on YouTube. Go to YouTube, look for Jeremy Stalnecker, and you'll find this content, the video version of uh, this episode, and a lot of other content there provided for you. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That lets you know when other content comes online, and I'd love to share that with you. If you'd like to know more about me, you can go to jeremystalnecker.com, jeremystalnecker.com, and you can find my blog. You can find links to all of my socials, and uh, I would love to uh, connect with you there. Thank you for being with me. Looking forward to today's conversation. Um, uh, man, just a fun conversation. This is the March or Die show, and on this show, we, of course, every week, talk about principles for moving forward when it would be easier to simply stay where you are and give up. Uh, we talk about marching, moving one step at a time to the next place, pushing beyond the obstacle, the difficulty, the trial, the battle that you're in so that you can better deal with the enemy and come out on top. Uh, that's marching. But there are a lot of people who decide that instead of marching because that's just too hard, they're going to stay where they are and die. Not the physical kind, although some make that decision as well, but the emotional and the relational and the spiritual death, that, that death that a lot of people can't see, but you know on the inside there's not a lot happening. You've just given up. We need to understand how to move forward when it would be easier to quit. My guest today is a former United States Marine, a business owner. Bruce Long is with us, and uh, Bruce has been associated with the Mighty Oaks Foundation for a while, attended one of our programs, and has been involved, uh, but transitioned out of the Marine Corps and into entrepreneurship, a difficult journey to be sure. He is the owner of Perfecto Coffee. You'll hear his story in, uh, in just a second. But, uh, man, great story and really a story of someone, a man and his family. And if you go on his website, you'll see his family, and they're very involved in the business. Uh, but of someone who decided that he could stay where he is, just kind of coast, hit it into neutral, uh, not really accomplish much, or transition from one career to another because he had to. You'll hear the story. Uh, but then do something else. Things changed, and he changed with them. He started a company, and then, as we know, COVID hit, and he had to adjust again, and he did that. He tells this story, some great principles about moving forward, marching, when it would be easier to stay where you are and simply give up. I'm so thankful for this conversation with Bruce Long. Bruce Long, thank you for joining me today. Really, really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. I'm, uh, I'm excited about our conversation. There's, there's so much here, but um, before we get into some specifics, tell us your story. How does someone go from serving in the United States Marine Corps, doing the things you did for your country to uh, owning a coffee brand and one that is really exploding? I mean, I see you guys everywhere. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the transition look like there? How did that process work? Well, fortunately for me, uh, I had a little time. I actually transitioned out of the Wounded Warrior Battalion. Uh, I, I endured three back surgeries. And so the neurosurgeon basically had a knee to kneecap conversation with me. And he explained to me, he said, hey, brother, you might want to look at trying to, you know, look at your next career, your next chapter in life, because you continue down this road. Uh, you, you won't be standing up straight, you know, come 50, 60 years old. Right. So what I did was uh, I've always had an entrepreneur spirit. And so I started looking at the market. I knew I wanted to become an entrepreneur and, and everything within the market. Uh, and I'm a fan of coffee was, was pointing me in that direction. You yeah. know, I was looking at GDPs. I was looking at data. Um, I even did some incubators for, um, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, veteran theme incubators. And so that's what really helped give me, you know, the runway to go ahead and, and set things up for my transition. Unfortunately, a lot of service members don't have uh, that runway, you know, two weeks, sometime a week. I've heard horror stories of a week transition. Yeah. 
you know, so I was fortunate and blessed enough to, to, to have that time to prepare. And so I wanted to hit the ground running and, and, and put everything into it. And, and that's what really got us to the point where we are right now. Do you have um, entrepreneurs or business owners in your family or what was your growing up like that kind of created this in you, this desire to, you know, build things? Well, well, growing up, I, I, I grew up in a single mom uh, uh, family. It was four, four kids and uh, ends were, were tight, you know. So, so what I did was I, as a eight-year-old to about 12 years old, I started just working on bikes and I would find scrap parts from friends or, um, or around the neighborhood. And I would put them together and I would sell them. And oh, wow. then that transitioned into to selling. Uh, we had a candy lady in the neighborhood. Mm. And so um, I asked my mom, I took the money from the bikes to take me to uh, uh, the store to buy bulks of sneakers and so on and so wow. forth and lollipops and things like that. And I took those to school uh, and I would sell those too. Mm. And so that gave me a little extra little money uh, to give to my mom and also uh, to buy things that, that, that I wanted as well. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so it's always been in you to find a way, make money, to, to build a business. Absolutely. Do you think that is something, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about you know business. Um, it's been really interesting to me over the last, year and a half or so to watch as the economy has really struggled and with shutdowns, and all these different things to watch how some business owners have really thrived. It's like, they just have it in them. They know how to make it work. And then others have folded. Do you think that, um, that entrepreneurship that just drive a desire to build something, is that something you either have or you don't have, or is that something people can learn? Um, it seems like that's something you've always had in you. I, I think it can be learned, you know, um, uh, with life, you're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. Right. You right. know, I've spoken with a number of entrepreneurs in the last past year and some of them, you know, uh, they have that no quit attitude. Mm. You know, I've got to make this work. My business model actually was totally different than what it is right now, you know, pre COVID, uh, before COVID. And so, we were going to take our, our coffee machines and start placing them inside of workplaces, oh, you know, yeah. um, hospitals, uh, organizations like Abbott, Amazon, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. We wanted to have a gourmet cup of coffee at the workplace so that workers in the morning or evening or at night, they can go straight to the workplace knowing that they got a, a, a quality cup of coffee there, not some K right. cup. Right. You know, not some pot of coffee. You know, Starbucks has done a good job at uh, showing people how good coffee can be. Although I don't think, well, I won't say uh, anything about. Uh, <laughs> I can say it. It's not good coffee. But <laughs> I start, they're, they're 800. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You know, they're 800 pound gorilla. So I don't want to start any fights with, you know, an 800 pound gorilla. But uh uh, they've done a good job in educating people how good coffee can be, yeah. you know, and so we wanted to just uh, dial in on that, jump in on that and, and place the coffee much closer to the consumer um, and, and also free up some of those drive through lines. Yeah. But now you have kind of a, a kiosk uh, business model where you go to you know, where the consumer is. And, and it's really cool to see, you know, particularly following your social media, you, you've been a part of some big events and met some big people along the way. And so that was a response for you to, to COVID and some of the shutdowns? That, that was. What, what, what we wanted to do is just make it temporary. We yeah. wanted to just continue to grow the brand. I've got these machines. I went ahead and set up in place you know, uh, the brand and everything. So there's no way I was going to just stop due to COVID, you know? Yeah. And, and so what we did was placed it in a mobile unit, take it out to soccer games, equestrian events, mm -hmm. golfing events, weddings, you name it, and continue to grow the brand during this time during the pandemic. And then eventually go back to our original business model right. 
However, things have been, you know, uh, uh, I believe everything happens for a reason and things have been going so well that I think, you know, it's, it's good to continue this model, at least for now and then see how it evolves and then see where else we can go ahead and start placing our machines as well. Uh, I love that you're that flexible. And I think that's where a lot of people in life, you know, we could talk about business, but just in life, people are so focused on their way that when things change, they're not able to change with them. This is one of the principles I talk about when I talk about when you, you need to march or die. One of the principles is life will change. Things will change and don't be surprised when it happens. Right. And that's, what allows you and others to remain successful because as life changes, you change with it. And that's, that's awesome. That's growth. It's opportunity. Adapt and overcome. It's something that we learned day one in the Marine Corps. Right. So that was another question I was going to ask you is as you, you know, come through the Marine Corps, you had that conversation. What are some of the things you learned as a Marine? Um, and that would be one adapt, improvise, overcome, but some of the lessons you learned as a Marine that you were able to leverage into your business. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of, there is a lot of crossover. Absolutely. I would say the number one is take care of your people, mm. you know, and right now my people are customers, you know, uh, uh, take care of your, 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 your people, talk with them, you know, see what's going on with them. And, and you can better adjust your leadership for us. It's, it's a just a, our business in the Marine Corps was adjust our leadership because I can't mentor a Marine, the one Marine, the same way I mentor another. Right. You know, there's different life experiences like you hit on earlier that we all have. And so, so having that and, and bringing that out into the business was connecting with people, really understanding what drives them. Uh, what motivates them, same as I did in the Marine Corps as a staff NCO, even as an NCO, you know, and, and bringing that into uh, the business that has worked for us. And also, I would say uh, to just adapt and overcome, as I hit on earlier, and, and have that the mission's got to get done. It's got to get done one way or another. You can knock on this door, you know, if B doesn't work. Let's go to plan C and having those plans of contingency. And, 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 and those things have really kept us afloat during this time. We've actually thrived during the pandemic. And, and in order to continue that, I want to continue to do the things that's work and, and, and continue to find other things that work. Um, I, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, folks who served in the military, who led in the military, they transition to civilian life or to a civilian job. And what they discover quickly, it seems, is that what they knew as leadership in the military doesn't translate into their civilian life. My belief as to why that is, is because I think a lot of times we look at leadership as a set of steps. You know, the leadership traits and principles we learned in the Marine Corps. We, we look at this is leadership. I do these things and that makes me a leader. When really leadership is, is much bigger than that, those who can leverage what they learned in the military into a civilian career are people that understand leadership isn't a list of stuff. It's not a list of steps that I do. There are principles behind that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because you seem to have a good grasp on, on leadership. You led Marines. You didn't lead them all the same. Now you're leading people outside of the military. Uh, how do you, uh, I wouldn't say define, but how do you address leadership? How do you think about leadership? Well, well, I think with, with, with most military members that you mentioned that, that have that issue, they get leadership confused with management. That's good. And, and, and so, so where you define the two, management is more of a set standard. You know, there's a mm. set standard of rules and regulations, so on and so forth. And then leadership is, is, is it gives you a little bit more freedom to adapt where right. management more so doesn't, right. you know? Uh, and, and so I would think having that freedom of, ad of adapting and really connecting with people where they are mm. is the key to leadership, you know? And then sacrifice, you know? Uh, sacrifice is something that, 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 that leaders, leaders really home in on and being a servant. 
where management is not more so being a servant, yeah. you know? So serving those, um, also having that flexibility, I think that's key to real leadership and thriving leadership in order for it to work. Yeah, that's good. At least for me. Yeah, that's great. I, I think management, you know, as you mentioned, it's it's more moving people and things from one place to another. There's there's a way it has to be done, but leadership really is. It's serving those that you have the opportunity to influence, right? And that's uh, absolutely yeah, that's a powerful difference. And I, I think that's one of the things that's lost on those who view military leadership as the standard when really it is management in a lot of sense and then they come into mm. a different environment and it's it's so hard to leverage that uh, one of the crazy things to me has been seeing strong military leaders combat leaders who can't lead at home who can't make it you know even with their kids let alone in a business environment and i think fundamentally it comes back to that understanding of leadership it's you need to learn to surf and if you can do that then you're going to make it you're going to be okay um, which is crazy to hear you talk about even your business model. You shifted your business model, I think, by asking the question, well, how can we continue to serve our customer? We can't go to them in this place, but we'll go to them in another place. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, why do you think there are not more service members, more military members, more veterans uh, starting businesses and getting into you know, the world that you entered into. It seems like, uh, man, that would be a natural transition, but it's not for a lot of people. What's the struggle there? What, what prevents that from happening? I think you have to look at the system as a whole. If you look at our transition system from not really geared towards entrepreneurship, you know? So I think that being one, and then, and also I think uh, just in sheer numbers, there's always, is going to be more workers than entrepreneurs, mm. you know? So, so, so that's one aspect of it, but, but that's go towards doing my transition period. Where can I lock on? Where can I get this knowledge to best set myself up to become a, 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 a great thriving entrepreneur when I got out? Yeah. However, everything was pointing me towards job interviews, towards resume writing, right. towards these other aspects. And, and so, so I think the system as it, as it sits right now, there's really, it's really geared towards, you know, entering the workforce, which is okay. Sure. You know, we're all built differently. And so for those that seeking those entrepreneur uh, opportunities, I think you have to dig a little bit more deeper. You got to do a little bit more research, so on and so forth. And sometimes, you know, the easier route as humans, we we typically take the the easier route right. to make sure that a we can continue to provide for our families and so on and so forth. And and this is a tough road, you know. Right. This is a right. tough road. It's it's not easy what at all. And and not to say that we steer away from you know tough toughness and 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 challenges and so on and so forth because we run in we run to those situations most time. However, I think the system just points us in this direction. And as military members, sometimes we just continue to just move forward in that direction. Yeah, it, it seems like there are more private organizations now that are providing some incentives to service members uh, to get into entrepreneurship and starting businesses. But yeah, the system I think is, we just want you to get into something that's gonna pay the bills when you get out and, and don't think bigger than that, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's a shame uh, because so much is learned in the military that should be leveraged in the private sector. And again, folks like you, I think you're exactly right, it's numbers. Folks like you are doing it, many people are, and uh, we're grateful for them. Um, I wish more would do it, uh, but, with the risk involved, you know, at that point in your life, maybe you're just not ready for that. Absolutely. What are uh, some principles that you have learned, um, you know, just in your life, maybe in business, um, perhaps even in your service, some principles that you've learned in your life that you would counsel others <laughs> to hang on to if they're dealing with difficulty in their lives. There are challenges, um, you know, in everyone's life, doesn't matter where you come from. What are some of the principles that you hang on to, to to move forward when it would be easier just to quit, to say, I'm not going to do this anymore? 
Well, growing up, my my mom would take us to church, you yeah. know, and and I hadn't always, you know, cling to that, you know. Um, um, but later on in my life, I I I I started to realize, you know, a there's more to this. Than, than what I'm getting credit, giving giving him credit for, mm. you know, and so so for me, um, I would say my my principle, one of my principles would be to to look at the word of God and and see how your life can can intertwine with that, That's and good. to to trust and have faith. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know how many situations I've been in uh, before the Marine Corps, during the Marine Corps, and even after the Marine Corps, where I've had to 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 go out on faith and and having faith, you know. And and the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And so you also have to do, you have to keep going during this process. And and so um, I would. That would be my number one principle. I think you know, a having faith, trust in you know uh, the spiritual being, God Almighty, to lead you through these circumstances, regardless of how daunting they may seem. You know, um, uh, he's he's greater than all, and and I've taken that. I, I I try to teach my kids and and also live by it. You know, so. So that's kept me going during the thick and thin times. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I talked about this even this last week uh, in church. I had the opportunity to preach and just talking about how we need to put faith in God because he's outside of our time and circumstance. Yes. And, and when we know that, we can follow him because he's not tied up with the stuff that we're dealing with. And that provides tremendous hope. Um, man, that's Amen. awesome. Uh, Bruce, where can people learn more about you and your coffee brand? I believe you're also selling bags of coffee now, so people can order it. I think that's right. Um, where yes. can people learn about you guys, follow you guys, get to know more about uh, Perfecto Coffee? Uh, our, our, our website is Perfecto Coffee Inc. Inc.com. Uh, there you can find out more about us. You can book our, our mobile coffee. Uh, shop. You can also buy our beans, uh, light, medium, and dark roast. Yeah. Uh, it's also have video and information there about us. We're also on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Perfecto Coffee Kiosk. And so, so there would be a great starting point uh, to learn more about us or get in contact with us from there. Yeah. That's awesome. I love your Instagram page. You're always posting up pictures of where you are and, and uh, cool people that you get to meet. And uh, it's a lot of fun to follow you there. So uh, Bruce, man, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, Got to get you in the office and uh, come check us out over here. But uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your, uh, your testimony and your words. And I uh, really appreciate you being on with me. I want to thank you too, uh, Jeremy, especially uh, for what you're doing as well. I think it's a much needed platform. Um, and also thank you for putting together Mighty Oaks. It's a program I went to. That's right. Uh, I had a chance to, 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 to band with, with fellow brothers, uh, have a chance to go out and, and, and we rode bikes and worship together. I got baptized there, awesome. learned more about the word. Uh, I was dealing with some mental things at the time that I went through and back pain at the time, Had having fellow believers and brothers pray over me, you know, uh, uh, it meant a lot. And I loved the atmosphere. Uh, I went to the Thousand Oaks location, yeah. beautiful location, awesome. wonderful. So thank you as well. And I appreciate you, brother. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I didn't mention, uh, yeah, you've been to one of our programs and and in the Mighty Oaks family. So uh, appreciate you. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll connect again. Absolutely. Take care, brother. God All bless right. you. Thank you. Yes, sir. What a great conversation. I hope that you will go over to perfectocoffeeinc.com. Check out the website. You can also find, uh, as Bruce mentioned, Perfecto Coffee on social media. Go to Facebook. I follow them on Instagram. And uh, they've got a great Instagram 
page, uh, tons of pictures, places they are, people they meet. Uh, it's great. You need to check that out. Uh, but some wonderful principles for life. Uh, talking about faith. <laughs> uh, man, if you have a business, you've started a small business, and you started it at a time when the world seems to be falling apart, you need to have faith in God, trust in God each step of the way, aligning your life to what he would have for you to do. It takes so much pressure off. And I'm thankful for uh, Bruce, for his story, understanding where he came from, decisions that were made, how he pushed through many of the obstacles that he's had to deal with and uh, continues to do so. What a great, uh, great opportunity to have a wonderful conversation. And I uh, hope that you'll check them out, buy some coffee, uh, find them. You'll be happy that you did. And uh, looking forward to conversations as we continue to go forward. We've got some great ones coming up in the next several weeks as well, and appreciate you listening and joining me. As we conclude, I will remind you, as I do every single week in life, <laughs> life can get really hard, can it? In life, you only have two choices. You can decide to stay where you are, to give up, to say it's just not worth it anymore, I'll just get by. You can decide to die or you can decide to put one foot in front of the other and march. Will you march or will you die? The choice is always yours. Thank you. I'll talk to you next week.